We're honored uh, to have Assembly Member Roger Dickinson with us to say a few words. Um, Roger uh, is one of our favorite uh, Assembly Members, um, four-term uh, supervisor from Sacramento, um, member of uh, LAFCO, of course, that most important role I'm sure he had. Uh, elected to the assembly in 2010 for the uh, ninth district, and he's uh, served as chair of the assembly banking and finance committee, and also a member of the accountability administrative review committee, where we work together on several things. And appropriate to our discussion today, he serves as a chair of the select committee on delinquency uh, uh, prevention and youth development, uh, and has been involved in this issue. I think both as a supervisor and certainly now as assembly member. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce assembly member Dickinson. See if I raise that a little bit. Well. Thank you, Bill, for uh, that nice introduction, and good morning to, to all of you. Uh, it is a real pleasure to be back here in Long Beach for, for this conference. And I say back here because uh, I was here with the, uh, the member of the CSAC uh, Executive Committee in, in 2010 when we made the decision, uh, subsequently ratified by the board, uh, of directors to hold this conference here. And I think that uh, coming back and uh, visiting again and seeing what a wonderful place Long Beach is and the tremendous facilities, uh, I have to say that, uh, and I hope you agree that it, it was a great decision to, to have the conference here and have the hospitality of Los Angeles County as well. Uh, and for me, it's a lot of fun to, to come back, back in, a, in, a, in a sense, uh, although it's not so far back, I suppose, to see lots of, lots of uh, colleagues and, and friends. Uh, and I notice uh, the county executive from my county, Sacramento, is here in the, in the room. I'm sure he's going to take careful note of, of what I say, and, and when I deviate uh, from what I should be saying, he'll, he'll let everybody in, in Sacramento County know that, I, I have no doubt. Uh, I, I um, uh, am particularly pleased to have uh, been asked to say a few things this morning as an introduction to this, to this workshop on realignment because, because realignment represents one of the largest policy and fiscal changes in governance in California, I think it's fair to say, uh, in the last 20 to 25 years. Uh, when you um, think back to realignment in the early 1990s, uh, I think that's about it, where you have to go uh, to think about a change as significant and dramatic uh, as, as what we are now going through in terms of criminal justice uh, realignment. Uh, and so there have been obviously many, many questions uh, that people are still developing the answers to and, and the implementation uh, of realignment, but, but I view myself as having been fortunate in seeing this issue from both sides of, of the street in a, in a manner of speaking. Um, as a county supervisor involved in local uh, corrections and the criminal justice system and the juvenile justice system uh, for close to 17 years, uh, and now as a member of the, uh, of the state legislature uh, with a responsibility to uh, have some voice in what happens with juvenile and adult corrections uh, in, the, in the state of, of California. One of the good bits of news coming out of this last election with it, without any question, <coughs> overlooked by uh, many in the debate about Proposition 30 was the inclusion of the constitutional guarantee of money to come to counties for the purpose of criminal justice realignment. And so that, that item which was negotiated over so long and hard by, by counties, and rightly so, uh, is one now that I think counties can take uh, a great deal of pride in, but also reassurance from that, that the funding will be there on a constitutional basis in the years ahead for criminal justice realignment and, and not subject to the vagaries and the whims of rises and falls in, in revenue and changes of, of heart or direction on the part of future legislatures uh, or governors. 
Prior to realignment, we were paroling about 120,000 inmates a year out of the state prison system. Uh, and as I suspect all of you in this, in this room are well aware, despite uh, the length of uh, any inmate sentence, with uh, very few exceptions, uh, all those inmates were coming back to our communities. They weren't locked up forever. They were returning. And the vast majority of them were returning without any foundation for changing course or achieving success in some legitimate fashion in their lives uh, back in their, in their home uh, communities. In short, they were really in no condition to transition back into society. And as a consequence, as a consequence we saw a recidivism rate that, that ran to two-thirds of those released or higher, as high as 70 percent. Simply put, the state prison system in California was failing. It was simply failing. And it was failing because it did not, in the end, prepare those who were released from it to come back to communities and do something other than reoffend in large measure. There were no rehabilitation programs of, of significant reach or degree. There were no uh, support services to any significant degree available when, when inmates were released or returned uh, to their communities. Um, there were, was no assessment of the services that, that they might need, and there certainly was um, almost no coordination with local communities. With respect to when, where, how, and the conditions and terms under which inmates would, would be released. I know I spent a lot of hours as a supervisor sitting in on meetings trying to work with local law enforcement uh, to get the state corrections officials to come to some kind of agreement with us on, on what they were doing in the release of, of inmates, when, where, how many, those kinds of things as we saw a large influx into downtown Sacramento from a host of state correctional institutions around the, around the North State. And we had, frankly, very little success in making any headway in coming to understandings with, with those, those officials. I don't think it's because they had bad intentions or were malevolent in any, in any way. It, it was simply a, a fact. They had a job to do. They saw their job as having certain limits. They dispensed their responsibility, and then, and then that, it was our problem. Allowing communities to address offender needs at the community level, and to do so using innovative evidence-based programs that fit the cultural, geographic, demographic, and resource characteristics of each community is one of the most important functions of realignment. It's about truly changing the equation in terms of what we do in addressing those who are uh, confined as, as offenders in our society. We know, as I said, that California has been under-resourcing rehabilitation programming at CDCR, and CDCR's programming was pretty much a one-size-fits-all approach. Little was done to differentiate and address the needs of an offender from rural Glen County versus an offender from urban San Bernardino County. What realignment does is it gives the key players in, in the offender, re, in offender rehabilitation in each community the opportunity to identify services that work best in that location and, and to balance incarceration with programming and education. Now that's easily said and perhaps harder to decide where to draw those, those lines. But I think in, in looking over the summaries of the four counties presenting at this workshop, one can see the diversity of programs being utilized to address offender needs, the balance being achieved, and the degree of success they seem to be having. I would only observe that to the extent that counties continue to follow a model that's more closely aligned with what the state of California was doing, that is where there's more emphasis put on confinement, versus identification of needs and addressing needs to reintegrate an offender back into the community, that the likelihood of success 
is less in those places than it will be in those places where the effort is made to figure out what will help the person who is offended become a person in the future who won't reoffend. And I think we can see whether it's Service Connect and San Mateo crew and Glenn booked in a different way in San Benito or the one-stop approach in San Bernardino. Each county is weaving a network of cohesive services that are suited to their communities. And this is, I think, another strength of realignment. It gives each county that opportunity to design approaches that will work for the characteristics of their locale. I might just draw a, a somewhat, uh, um, I hope not too strained parallel to Proposition 10, the Tobacco Tax Initiative, which we all know as First Five. The idea behind First Five was to actually create 58 laboratories in the state of California to test new and innovative approaches to improving the health and welfare of children zero to five and, and their families. Uh, it gave us the opportunity around the state of California, for those of you who are familiar with or have been involved in First Five, to try all sorts of different things and not be constrained by looking at simply one overarching program with one set of approaches from, from the state level. As a consequence, we have seen, I think, over the years that First Five has been in place, an, an enormous array of ideas tested with accountability, uh, with evaluation, as they need to be. But from that, we have seen emerge a number of different, a number of different uh, ideas that, that have worked extremely well in helping our youngest children and their, and their families. Well, in a similar sort of way, for a very different purpose, criminal justice realignment creates that same opportunity. It creates the opportunity for each county to figure out what will work best in, in its county. And to put that emphasis on those things that will help reduce recidivism, reduce reoffenders, re increase criminal justice savings, reduce consequently the necessity of expenditures on the criminal justice system and leave more funding and for other things and safer communities uh, as a result. Just, just in what we see in the, in the programs here that you're going to hear about, uh, it, there are some impressive indicators. 22% uh, uh, of offenders participating in San Bernardino's one-stop program have reoffended as compared to that 66 to 70 percent that we talked about a few moments ago. Uh, 10 percent in the Glen County crew pilot. And those criminal justice savings are going uh, up as expenditures go down. Now, the, it's obviously early. Uh, it'll take, it'll take a, a number of years for us to figure out what works best and how to make these judgments about the allocation of of resources, um, what should be potentially standardized, uh, if anything, uh, uh, across the state. But in the final analysis, uh, I would come back to this issue of balance. And it is that balance which I think remains the, the key and fundamental term that, that we all need to keep in mind about how we get to success with criminal justice realignment. We know that in the area of juvenile justice, we have made an enormous transition with very, very now, very few juvenile offenders going to the state system. Um, we've done it by and large, I think, very successfully across the state of California. And uh, you in this room and your colleagues around the state involved in the juvenile justice system deserve enormous credit for taking on that challenge and, and meeting it successfully. We have the same opportunity, in my judgment, with adult criminal justice realignment. And it gives us the prospect of a much brighter future in the state of California. Because we know if we continued with what we were doing, which was locking people up in state prisons and not preparing them to go back to their communities, 
that we would simply continue to repeat the failure that has marked that exercise over our past history. We now have a template for success to change, to make our community safer, to help people realize a productive life, and to save money in the process. I congratulate the programs that you're going to hear about, and I hope that they are an inspiration to all of you and to counties all around California to follow the example with, with their own local twist of whatever works to make sure that we accomplish the promise of criminal justice realignment. Thanks very much.